I had a trial, okay? Just just bear with me, please. I'm sorry. This is a long time ago when, when the law was normal and the complainant was married. The accused was married. They went to a casino. He gave her money to gamble. They gambled together. They had a really good time. They went back to a hotel. They had sex. On the way back, the f***ing husband of the complainant met them, accused her of cheating on him, and she said, I was raped, right. okay? And said, the whole time I was with he kidnapped me. I was completely unhappy. I didn't want to be with him. He was forcing me to do everything. It was awful. And guess what? Her husband took her back, and we went to trial. And guess what? I was able to get, and, and Grace at our office was able to assist in going through hours of surveillance camera footage from the f***ing casino. They gave it to us. God bless, because in back that back that day, if we wrote to them, they actually gave us okay? Mm -hmm. Now they go, no, I have to give it to the police, which will never act, we'll never go get it. So we got several hours of footage from the casino, broke it down into segments, screenshot, everything. This was, un it was probably one of the most satisfying cross-examinations. Can I just have like four minutes for this? So this complainant asked to testify behind a screen. So I denied it. I said, I'm not agreeing. Police officer who was in charge testified and said, no, no, she's very scared. Uh, this will allow for her to tell the truth. And I asked one question, your officer, do you believe the complainant? Absolutely, I do. Have you ever met a complainant you never believed? No, I haven't. Do you believe in any way, shape or form that testifying behind a screen will help the complainant lie? No, that's absolutely not true, Mr. Newberger. Okay? So then the officer sat beside me and I got to cross exam. I didn't f***ing turn over the surveillance until about a week before. Nobody read it. Nobody looked at it. Nobody did anything. I turned it over. I didn't have to back then. Okay. There were video of the complainant with my client at the poker table, kissing him, mm -hmm. stroking his neck, touching him, kissing him. As he won a pot of money, he gave her a f***ing thousand dollars. And we're going back like a period of time. They're going to the cash out room. She's kissing him and touching him and stroking him. And he's giving her money and they're holding hands and they're making out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And screen after screen, I stilled it on a big camera and I went by. So was this you hating it? Was this you not wanting to go near him? Was this you not liking? Sorry, did you not like the $2,000 he gave you at that fucking point? Mm -hmm. There was, she was dead, 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 fucking dead. And I remember turning to the officer during my cross-examination. Well, you've met an innocent accused now, officer. All right. <laughs> they withdrew. But this is a stark example. And we do not get cases where it's going to be on continuous surveillance. This is like a fucking rarity. So this is called, just, just to, to remind but people, that, but this is, is supposed to be a rape myth. That, yes. That's a rape myth. That a woman would make up a lie to cover her tracks for cheating. It is called alibi and is in this paper, peer-reviewed paper, the number one reason that people uh, have have who admit they lied have said that they lied about it was for an alibi for one reason it could be because they got caught cheating or it could be because they they failed an exam or you know, a bunch of other things but alibi is number one reason